All right, so I got a 201 on my bench, TC, and I thought we just had a brake issue. The brake wouldn't engage. And I was like, all right, let's just go out and test run and see what's up. Let's listen to this clunking and then we'll take it inside and see if it really is that dead. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, well, this didn't take long. All right. <laughs> uh, let's pull this off and take a look at that bearing. Your clutch always comes off. It's left-handed threads so and tighten to loosen. But, uh, I, you know, we might actually take the time and hook this up to the computer. This is one of my better customers, and he does have, the last time I hooked it up, and this might be that same saw, that it had like 14,000 starts or 12,000 starts or some ridiculous amount of, uh, of, uh, run time on it I'll slide the oil pump off of here i don't know how it ran up to this point or you know maybe just the the uh the bearing just disintegrated come on there we go Wow, that's rough. I, you know, when you look at the wear and tear on this saw, I mean, I just, I can't honestly say, I'm in the business of fixing things. You know, we've replaced the muffler on it. I'm sure I've done a top handle swap on this at some point in time. Yeah, the starter housing's pretty rough. You know, it, it might be a good part saw, but um, let's dig in a little deeper. What do you think? Take a, a few minutes to strip the gas tank off of this and let's pull the cylinder and let's see if there's any damage to the crankcase because with this thing moving that much, I mean, that's just, I've never seen, that's, there's got to be some of the rollers on the inside because I don't think anything got out. You know, there's not enough room for that. Let's take a couple of minutes. Let's have some fun. Let's do this live and see how fast I can get it done. I work on these a lot. They're super easy to work on. So let's just start ripping things apart and create a pile of parts in the process. Hope everybody had a good weekend. I've got, let's see, fuel lines off. Go there. Get the tank vent loose. Come on. There we go. You're free. And I'm trying to, like, I take you in. This is just, you know, everyday small ball stuff. That loose. Throttle rod. And let's just start. You got a bad AV bearing or AV um, bushing back here. Oh, come on. That's one of the issues, you know, working on this stuff so dirty. That. Nothing there. Nothing there. <laughs> and again, I'm trying to work fast, so, you know, you guys just bear with me. So let's get that loose. Get the fuel lines out of the way. I probably should have put the camera on the other side of me so you guys kind of you know follow along and watch. Alright, so top handle is basically free and out of the way. Maybe we can get a little bit more room. With this. that ground wire and 
that off. Snake this through here. There we go. Impulse line. So now we'll have a good view of everything. Yeah, these bolts, wow. They really walled out the case. They just, I guess they've just become stripped after all this time. Peel that back. And take the intake boot off. Let's take the tank off. See, there's really not a whole lot to these. You just got to work on these guys. Nice shiny muffler. Let's get our cylinder bolts. Oh, this poor thing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe just a bearing will do it. damage maybe just the cage that fell apart i don't know only take you in you can get a better look oh what a mess working on old nasty dirty ass equipment uh yeah this customer used to use ultra for a long time i would imagine uh, you know <laughs> you know you look at the long-term coking and again, we could we could plug this thing into the computer and see what's up. Um, but there's nothing in there. There's no, none of the rollers. All right, I took the uh, um, chain catcher off here. It covers up one of the bolts and then you'll have to remove this rubber grommet right here because it covers up another one of the case bolts. That's your sneaky one if you were ever so inclined to uh, split one of these. That's it. You should just be able to lift up on this. One, two, three. There we go. There we go, just kind of crack the seal. Woof, come on. She's stuck. What's the hold up? Come on, this should just lift right off. This isn't your traditional case split. You know, you don't have... Still got a thread on? No. Oh, I don't want to let go. Sorry, I didn't mean to drag this out. I thought this would be pretty straightforward. There we go. Finger stuck in the hole. So, yes, she's puked her berries. So, there should have been a nylon cage right there. And these are what the uh, roller bearings, not ball bearings, different style of bearing here. I mean, I guess a gasket and seals and new bearings would do it. Um, what do you think? All right, so that really doesn't give me the full story because we've got the latest version of 
ignition coil on here i believe this saw just based on its wear and tear that we've actually replaced the ignition coil on this and that's not a true show of the life of the uh of the saw but with everything i'm looking at i mean it just needs gaskets seals and uh new bearings which really isn't too terribly bad well, I spoke too soon. Out of all my gasket sets that I got, there's one for a 200, there's one for a 500, 661, 440, 460, no 201. All right, there's that cage I was talking about, and obviously this one's, you know, it used to be white nylon once upon a time ago, and uh, I guess it just, just couldn't do anymore. Here's the seal from that side, even as nasty as it is. That doesn't look too bad, but that's from the flywheel side. And then you get over here, and there's your outer race. There's your roller bearings. And then if you look, that's as tight as I can get you in. You can really see the cracks in there. You know, and this is on the clutch side. Now let me back you out. So that side's obviously going to get a little bit more heat. The exhaust is over there from the muffler. Um, well, dang, no climatic end to this one. Uh, I'll get some parts in and we'll throw this together. You know, bearings are relatively reasonable. I want to say these don't ever use anything but like the real German bearings in this. Um, you'll have just as much crankshaft play with the aftermarket bearings. I tried it one time and uh, never again. Uh, so I want to say one of these gasket sets is like 35 bucks. Comes with the seals. And then a set of bearings is going to be like 60 bucks at the most. You know, so $100 in parts, and we put this old beater back together, it can, you know, live for another day. And and I think, you know, when we start talking about doing these rebuilds, you know, as the prices for new saws go up and up and up, it also raises the threshold of, you know, what's it worth to put this back together again? The only other wear part that I saw was um, uh, the, the rear... Um, AV bushing. There's supposed to be a chunk of rubber right here, and it's been released. Uh, all right, again, that was pretty anticlimactic. Um, I might do a follow up video on this and show you how all this goes back together. These are a breeze to work on them. Don't let them intimidate you. Uh, I do have another 201 here. I don't even know what's wrong with it. Same company. So let me see if I can't get one of them ready to go. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. Don't forget, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And uh, let's move on to the next one. There's a silver lining. So this one would run, just wouldn't idle. Um, I found something interesting. So this goes right here, and this goes in here. The foam was missing, and that's where the air filter goes over. So... This is kind of crazy, but if you look, this small area right there, that little tiny hole, that's where the fuel comes through. There was a wood chip in the way blocking this hole, so it wasn't getting any idle circuit uh, fuel. So anyway, uh, that's all cleaned up, saw it runs fine. Uh, it would not shut off. I did have to take off this side portion of the handle and on your choke lever here, there's a small little brass pin. And when you push forward, it makes contact with two little spring arms that are connected to the ignition coil. And the brass just had a bunch of gook on it. So a little bit of brake cleaner on there, some compressed air, and now it shuts off. It does everything it's supposed to do. So again, thanks for sticking with me and I will see you on the next one. You'll have a great day.